there's a common misconception that fruit is bad for people with diabetes. And that if you eat fruit, your blood glucose is gonna spike, it's gonna cause unwanted weight gain, and it's gonna increase your insulin requirements. Across social media, you'll see people posting frequently about avoiding fruits altogether and eating foods like yogurt, tuna, cheese, chicken, and peanut butter instead, then showing their flat blood glucose response over the course of the next few hours. It's easy to think that fruit is bad for you and that it's nothing but a fancy wrapper for a bunch of sugar. But there are a ton of reasons why fruits are fantastic for people living with all forms of diabetes. Fruit is packed with vitamins, minerals, fiber, and water. And just because they tend to have a higher carbohydrate content than many vegetables does not mean that you should avoid them. The truth is that the word sugar is misused when referring to the energy contained within a fruit. And the whole carbohydrate energy that you get from eating a fruit is one of the secrets that can help you reverse insulin resistance, which in turn is gonna help you prevent and reverse prediabetes and type two diabetes. And yes, I did say reverse. Now in this video, we're gonna explore a number of things. Number one, we're gonna teach you why you shouldn't fear the sweet whole carbohydrate energy that's contained in a fruit and why it's unnecessarily confusing to talk about the word fruit and the word sugar in the same sentence. Number two, you'll learn about why refined and processed sugars are the sugars to avoid completely. Number three, we're gonna talk about why fruit can help reverse prediabetes and type two diabetes, and yes, I did say reverse. And number four, we're gonna talk about some of our absolute favorite fruits to enjoy. And we suggest you watch until the end because we'll explain how the same reasons why we recommend these seven fruits are the same reasons to avoid other foods if you're living with diabetes. Now, fruit is a misunderstood boogeyman. One of the main reasons that people with diabetes are afraid to eat fruit is due to the fact that fruits are high in whole carbohydrate energy. However, this isn't the whole story. Now, fruits are high in whole carbohydrate energy, which can lead to elevated blood glucose, but this can actually be easily avoided by paying attention to the overall fat content of your diet at the same time. Now, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. What's more important is that referring to the energy in fruit as quote unquote sugar is downright confusing because sugar is also used to refer to a white crystalline substance that's the product of a refining process that is known and has been proven by modern research methods to cause metabolic dysfunctions like weight gain, fatty liver disease, insulin resistance, prediabetes, and type two diabetes. So it's important to be crystal clear when you use the word sugar. Sugar is a biological term used to describe a monosaccharide. Monosaccharides are molecules like glucose, fructose, galactose, xylose, and anything that ends in the letters O-S-E. Anything that ends in O-S is technically a sugar according to molecular and cellular biology textbooks. Now, sugars play a wide range of roles in biology, but one of the most important roles is to store energy. Now, plants make glucose and they store it as long chain molecules known as carbohydrates that include number one, starch, number two, cellulose, and number three, chitin. Table sugar is very different. Table sugar is not found in nature. It is a highly refined substance that began as sugar cane or sugar beets. But then through a refining process, the sugar cane or the sugar beets was turned into a white crystal. And in order to do that, it had to get milled and dried and extracted and dehydrated and bleached. And each of those refining processes dramatically reduces the overall nutrient value. Meanwhile, carbohydrates in nature are often eaten in their whole state. They are protected by both macro and micronutrients that include number one, fat, number two, protein, number three, vitamins, then minerals, fiber, water, antioxidants, and phytochemicals. So there are other classes of macro and micronutrients which actually serve a protective function because they protect the monosaccharides from affecting your blood glucose within a short period of time. These protective nutrients, you can think of them as things that slow down the rate of absorption of glucose and fructose from a fruit. And that in turn leads to a small rise in your blood glucose, 
rather than a very large rise that you would get from eating unprotected white table sugar. Now think of these protective nutrients as a biological break. And the purpose of this break is to slow down the digestive process. And trust me, that's a very good thing when it comes to molecular biology. On the other hand, white table sugar is unprotected because it has zero macro and micronutrients to come along for the ride. As a matter of fact, white table sugar contains zero fat, zero protein, zero vitamins, zero minerals, zero fiber, zero water, zero antioxidants, and zero phytochemicals. White table sugar is absorbed extremely quickly into your blood, resulting in a large and rapid rise in blood glucose that can trigger a host of metabolic pathways in your liver, in your pancreas, and in your adipose tissue that then cumulatively result in weight gain, high blood glucose, high insulin concentrations, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure. Fruit, on the other hand, is a three-dimensional matrix of both micro and macronutrients together. And even though a fruit has a sweet flavor and may trick you into thinking that it's just a giant ball of sugar, it's not. It's the presence of these protective macro and micronutrients that allows the fruit to be digested and absorbed slowly at a physiologically normal rate. And that results in the uptake and transport of not only glucose at a slow rate, but the uptake and transport of very powerful disease-fighting nutrients. Think about it this way. In the world of metabolic health, slow is good and fast is problematic. Another reason that people are afraid of fruit is due to a measure of food called the glycemic index. The glycemic index is a measure of how quickly and how high your blood glucose levels spike after eating certain foods. Some fruits are higher on the glycemic index, including lychees, cantaloupe, and watermelon. But most fruits are actually medium or low on the glycemic index, even though that may seem strange. Even unbelievably sweet fruits, such as bananas, dates, apples, grapes, mame sapote, sapodillas, papayas, and pineapple are considered low glycemic fruits. The sweetness of a fruit is not a reliable indicator of its glycemic index or natural sugar content. We published a video about how one of our coaching members, Greg, lowered his A1C by adding in more bananas and other fruits that people told him were high on the glycemic index. And you can watch that video by clicking right here. It's a classic story. Man acts on incomplete information. Man recognizes an increasing A1C value. Man gets diagnosed with prediabetes by his doctor. Man then changes diet and eats the very fruits he avoided for years. Man lowers A1C and improves his health dramatically. Now, not many people know this, but the true underlying cause of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes is a condition known as insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is the accumulation not of excess sugar, but of excess dietary fat in tissues that are not designed to store large quantities of fat, which then reduces the action of insulin in your muscles and in your liver tissue. When you develop insulin resistance, tissues actively reject glucose because they can't communicate with insulin effectively, which causes your blood glucose, also known as blood sugar, to increase. So it's insulin resistance that causes many of the complications associated with diabetes. There are three reasons why it's smart to monitor your blood glucose level. Number one, it's a lot easier to measure your blood glucose than check every single one of your cells for traces of insulin resistance. In fact, that's impossible. Number two, your blood glucose level has a direct effect on your energy levels, on your mood, on your cognitive ability, on the function of your liver, on the function of your adipose tissue, and on the function of your muscles. And number three, you can technically survive on a very high level of insulin resistance for a long period of time. However, the higher your level of insulin resistance, the higher your overall chronic disease risk. Therefore, knowing what your blood glucose is on an hour by hour or day by day basis is a way that you can lower your blood glucose and potentially lower your insulin resistance level to protect yourself against future metabolic dysfunction. But make no mistake, high blood glucose is just a symptom, just a complication of diabetes. 
Insulin resistance is the true problem you have to face. That's why the Mastering Diabetes Method focuses directly on creating a lifestyle that can help you reverse insulin resistance. Because if you reverse insulin resistance, you've reversed the most predictable cause of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. Well, how do you do that? And where does fruit come into this picture? Well, we're going to tell you. The most important part of the Mastering Diabetes Method is a low-fat plant-based whole food diet. The diet is a tailor-made diet to help your body quickly burn through excess stored fat and reverse the process of insulin resistance, all providing you with plenty of energy along the way. The Mastering Diabetes Method has as a base fruits, starchy vegetables, legumes, and intact whole grains, as well as leafy greens, non-starchy vegetables, mushrooms, herbs, and spices, and many other things. And we don't kid when we talk about fruit. In fact, when you switch to this diet, some people eat five to 10 servings of fruit a day, and some eat much, much more. This is because fruit is a fantastic source of energy has crucial vitamins and leaves you feeling energized and inspired, which are super important for any diet that you want to keep in the long term. Now, a lot of people ask us, should I avoid fruit at first? And this is actually a really good question because whether or not you should avoid fruit at first depends on your baseline level of insulin resistance. Now, if you're already insulin resistant at baseline and you experience high blood glucose values on a daily basis, then adding carbohydrate energy, especially from fruits, is likely to cause your blood glucose to go even higher. So you wanna make sure that if you are insulin resistant at baseline, that you are including lots of leafy greens in your food, you're including lots of non-starchy vegetables in your food, that you eat your meals nice and slowly, and that you split your meals into two parts that are separated by approximately about a 15 minute rest. The combination of those actions is likely to keep your blood glucose nice and low until insulin resistance fades away into the background then you can begin to increase your consumption of fruit. But in the long term, you'll be able to eat all green light fruits as you consistently maximize insulin action by maintaining a low fat intake. The only exception will be the high fat fruits in our yellow light category, which are avocados and durian. That's why we've put together a list of seven fantastic fruits to start adding to your diet immediately. The first on the list of fruits to add include berries like blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, and blueberries. Fruits don't get much better than berries for people living with diabetes because they are truly delicious and they are packed with significant antioxidant containing compounds. Strawberries and blackberries in particular are packed full of vitamins and minerals. They've got all your B vitamins, including folate, which is important. They're high in fiber, and they help protect against colon cancer. Not to mention, these are fantastic as a snack in cereal and oatmeal or even on their own. Now, if you're gonna eat fruit, it's hard to pass up pears. Pears come in many different shapes and sizes, many different varieties, and they are great to eat at breakfast time. They're also great to put into salads, and you can actually make a salad dressing at, out of them that contains no added sugar, no added fat, and tastes phenomenal. And what do they have to offer for your health? the same key vitamins you get from berries, plus more fiber and potassium. Next up are apricots. Apricots are an underrated fruit, but they're coming in strong in terms of popularity, and it's easy to see why, because they're very tasty. Now, apricots are a great addition to salads. You can put them in cereals, you can put them in oatmeal, uh, and you can even eat them just as a fresh snack by themselves. They're also a nutrient-dense, high-fiber fruit that helps protect your heart while giving you energy and a bit of vitamin C for your immune system. And don't forget cherries. They're not just for cocktails and sundaes. In fact, cherries are a great source of vitamin C, fiber, and other important vitamins. Cherries are beneficial to your eyesight. Did you know that? I didn't even know that. Cherries are full of antioxidants that can help prevent macular degeneration, which is a complication of diabetes. And in addition to that, once you start eating them, they're pretty addicting and it's hard to put them down. Now, anyone who's lived in the South knows peaches. They are juicy, sweet, and just flat out tasty. Peaches also come in strong with a lot of great benefits for people living with diabetes. Peaches, just like apricots, are a stone fruit that have an incredibly high fiber content, which is a good thing. And it helps your blood glucose stay nice and controlled and can improve your cardiovascular health at the same time. 
They also contain vitamins A and vitamin C along with potassium, and all three of those are very beneficial for your cardiovascular health as well as your liver and your muscle. Apples, one a day to keep the doctor away. Well, it's hard to beat an apple. First, they're low in calories. Second, apples are loaded with antioxidants that help prevent tumor growth and heart disease. And the best part is that you can feel satisfied for multiple hours after eating as little as one apple, maybe a couple, which isn't always the case when you're consuming things that are sugary, especially if they're refined. It turns out that when your mom told you to eat an apple, she was telling you the right thing. And the secret weapon for people living with type two diabetes is amla. Amla is the Indian gooseberry, and it's something you'll want to add to your diet no matter what. Now, amla can lower your blood pressure. Who doesn't want that? Can lower your level of insulin resistance. Who doesn't want that? It can lower your blood glucose. Who doesn't want that? It can increase your HDL cholesterol, your good cholesterol. Who doesn't want that? And it's the world's most powerful LDL cholesterol or bad cholesterol reducing food. Who doesn't want that? And all of that happens simply by adding amla berries to your existing diet. A very small amount of them can elicit these very powerful responses as long as you're consistent on a daily basis. It turns out that amla berries are actually the second most powerful source of vitamin C ever discovered by scientists, and they are the single most powerful antioxidant rich containing food ever discovered by humans. When it comes to fruits for people living with diabetes, amla is the king. The problem is that it doesn't taste very good, which is why we recommend checking out amla green, which is a tea that we created that actually tastes very good and allows you to get amla berries in your mouth on a daily basis and love the experience. Now, when it comes to fruit, it's almost impossible to go wrong. However, we do wanna mention the ways in which fruit can be packaged or consumed that can lead to a spike in your blood sugar. So these include most canned fruit, most fruit juice, most fruit sodas, and dried fruit, especially if that dried fruit is covered in added sugar. The key here is additives, especially syrups and sugars. It's funny that when you think about it, after all, fruits are sweet and delicious by themselves, but yet they are often put into syrups and have sugars added to them when they are put into cans, but it doesn't really make much sense because they don't need it. So what have we learned today? Well, we've learned why there's such a misconception about fruit. We also learned why fruit is pretty much always a good thing for you if you're living with diabetes, with a few exceptions for high fat fruits or for people living with exceptionally high levels of insulin resistance that you can then wash away over the course of a two phase process. And finally, we learned about seven fruits that are great to start adding to your diet, including the king of them all, amla. It's all part of the low fat plant-based whole food diet, which is a proven strategy to improve your overall health, to feel great, to take control of your diabetes health, and to help you attain your ideal body weight today and permanently. If all that sounds like something you might be interested in, then keep listening. There's a reason that so many people are talking about their A1C miracle, lowering their A1C by an average of 2%, and feeling better than they have felt in years. We have a range of programs from group coaching to private coaching, which can all help you take full control of your diabetes health. In order to find out which option is best for you, we suggest booking a free discovery call. Simply click the link below and you'll be directed to a page where you can book a time that works for you. And you'll speak with a Mastering Diabetes Enrollment Specialist and they will help align you with the right program, at the right time, with the right coach for you, and it's gonna fit within your budget. So you gotta talk to our team, and they're gonna help make sure you're set up for success. And don't forget to push that cute little like button with your thumb or with your mouse, and subscribe to the channel. And also don't forget to turn on notifications by clicking that cute little bell icon. When you do that, you're gonna be the first person to be notified of new videos when we create them, so that you can get the inside scoop on how to master your diabetes health using your food as medicine. See you in the next video.